I've dedicated my entire career to the study of artificial intelligence, or AI for short. So you can imagine that this question, is AI evil, is very much on my mind. To get started, let me show you a few items and get your gut reaction, evil or not. Landmines. Landmines are clearly evil. They kill and maim innocents. They stick around for decades. We've signed an international treaty to ban them. How about technologies such as washing machines, antibiotics, and textiles? They save our time, eradicate diseases, provide affordable clothing. Good stuff, right? Well, historically, many new technologies were greeted with some resistance and suspicion. The 19th century Luddites fought the introduction of looms, the beginning of the textile industry. They threw shoes into the looms to disrupt their operation, ultimately a misguided gesture. So how about AI? Is AI good or evil? Should we attempt to ban AI as we did with landmines? How many of you have some very real concerns about AI? Please raise your hands high. No surprise. AI's gotten a bad rap in Hollywood films such as The Terminator in the press from prominent scientists such as the physicist Stephen Hawking. Hawking says that AI could be the worst thing that's ever happened to the human race, worse than climate change, worse than nuclear weapons. The fear is real. I get it. Some of the most virulent statements against AI have come from the entrepreneur Elon Musk, he says that with AI, we're summoning the demon, that AI could be a threat to the very existence of the human race. Frankly, this demon talk hurts, but let's put emotions aside and, <laughs> and spend our time trying, trying to discuss AI rationally. Is AI an existential threat to the human race? Newsweek magazine sees AI as a clear and present danger with headlines like, AI is coming and it's poised to wipe us out. And Newsweek isn't an outlier. We see these headlines over and over again. Frankly, they sell, they sell newspapers. But still the question is, is AI poised to wipe us out? The renowned roboticist Rod Brooks says, if you're worried about the Terminator, just keep the door closed. AI technology still has a long, long way to go. My, my colleague, Anne Gruing, likes to say, if you're worried about AI turning evil, that's like worrying about overpopulation on Mars. It's just way beyond the pale. But nevertheless, what happens in the future? What happens when the robot finally figures out how to open that door? Well, to answer that question, we need to take a step back and ask, what is AI exactly? In Hollywood films, it's typically depicted as a creepy being. I can't do that, Dave. But we need to separate <laughs> Hollywood from the real world and science fiction from real science. To get deeper into this, let's look at one of the most impressive AI systems ever built. In March 2016, the computer program AlphaGo defeated the human world champion in the ancient board game of Go. Like more than 100 million people, I was following the match, riveted. But unlike some, I wasn't surprised by the outcome. When it comes to puzzles, to board games, AI is unstoppable. It's able to look at billions of permutations at superhuman speeds. But the real world is more complex, is more nuanced. And the fact of the matter is that AlphaGo is a very limited system. To illustrate this, I wrote down some questions that I would ask AlphaGo if we were introduced in some AI cocktail party. I would say, AlphaGo, can you play poker? The answer is no. AlphaGo can only play Go. It doesn't even extend to other games. AlphaGo, can you cross the street? Again, the answer is no. AlphaGo cannot do what a human child can do. It doesn't even know what a street is. AlphaGo, can you tell me about the game? Turns out, again, the answer is no. AlphaGo doesn't understand the game. It can't explain itself. It doesn't even know it won. <laughs> There's a key distinction here that we need to make to understand 
AlphaGo and AI systems uh, in, more, in more general terms. And that's the distinction between intelligence on the one hand and autonomy on the other hand. This is the key, so please stick with me here. I'm going to illustrate this using a two-by-two two table. In the top left, we have high autonomy with minimal intelligence. That's a bunch of teenagers drinking on a Saturday night. <laughs> and on the bottom right, we have high intelligence with minimal autonomy. And that's AI systems like AlphaGo. Nothing more than a fancy calculator. With humans, we have free will, we make choices, we're intelligent. Intelligence and autonomy go hand in hand. But machines are different. You can be super intelligent in some narrow sense, like playing Go, but have no autonomy whatsoever. As another example, look at computer viruses. They're autonomous, they're dangerous, but they're not intelligent. So now we can go back to answer this question, what is AI? The real kind, not the Hollywood version. AI is a tool for people to use. A pencil. A fancy pencil, sure, but still something that we as people draw with. My six-year-old, Mikey, is more autonomous than any AI system. He can make his choices, he can cross the street, he can explain himself, he can understand English when he wants to. That's, that's the difference. Let's look at weapon systems. Look, military weapon systems are scary enough. Imagine a weapon system that can operate with no human in the loop, that can fly around, halfway around the world to hunt somebody down and kill them. That's the stuff of nightmares, right? But notice, the nightmare is the autonomy. Autonomous weapons are a nightmare, and AI researchers are unequivocally opposed to these systems. We've written a letter to President Obama saying so. No autonomous weapons. Okay, how about jobs? That's a concern, AI and jobs. How many jobs have been taken away due to automation? How many more will be taken away due to the advance of AI? Hal Varian, Google's chief economist, says that the old jobs will go away and new jobs will come. But how quickly will that happen? And what will we do in the meantime? This is a valid concern. I stay up at night worrying about this. My point is, though, that the doomsday headlines, the Terminator scenario, those are distractions from the real concerns, like AI and jobs, the concerns that we ought to be thinking about. You might say, okay, then why play with fire, as it were? Why not just declare a moratorium on AI and be done with it? And first of all, much as we would like to stop technology sometimes, technological change is hard to stop, to even slow down. If we slow down our progress, other nations uh, will overtake us. If you think about the past, what if we slow down our progress with technologies like electricity, like antibiotics, and think we want to live in a world where Infant mortality is way up and life expectancy is way down. We don't want to go back to the Stone Age. But the most important reason to investigate AI is that it has enormous potential benefits, potential benefits that can save lives. Paul Allen founded the nonprofit Allen Institute for Artificial Intelligence in Seattle with a clear mission, AI for the common good. My colleagues, AI, my colleagues and I at the Institute are not mad scientists and in love with our creations like Dr. Frankenstein. We're sincere, well-meaning folks trying to unlock the potential benefits of AI. And let me give you two quick examples here. First, from the realm of science. Scientists, researchers, doctors, we're all inundated with documents and data and starving for insight and wisdom. We need help to cut through the clutter, to home in on the information that we need. Last year, we launched a scientific search engine called Semantic Scholar. It's free, it's available over the internet, and it's been used by millions of people to do better science. Over time, we're gonna see more and more sophisticated science search engines and science, scientific helpers. Imagine a situation where the, cl uh, the cure for an intractable cancer is hidden somewhere amongst thousands and thousands of tedious clinical studies and experiments. An AI search engine 
like semantic scholar, could help scientists connect the dots and find a cure that would otherwise be overlooked. AI can help scientists find the answers to science's thorniest problems. My Microsoft colleague Eric Horvitz likes to say that it's the absence of AI technologies that is already killing people due to medical errors, preventable medical errors. Preventable medical errors are the third leading cause of death in American hospitals. We can change that. AI systems can warn exhausted and overworked doctors about mistakes. They can point out to them new treatments. They can make a difference and save lives. When I look around this room, I see that AI will save your life. And that's true for 100, maybe 200 of you, more over time, and even more when we think about our families. My final example is from the realm of driving. Human drivers worry me, particularly now that my 17-year-old is driving regularly. <laughs> He's texting and driving. I, I know this because I get the text. <laughs> um, at least he's not drinking and driving, although I worry that some of his classmates are. We have over 30,000 deaths in our highways each year, and AI-based safety systems at car, in cars could reduce those substantially. A few weeks ago, a friend of mine was jogging in Seattle, and he was hit by a car. The driver was 96 years old. We want our grandparents, our parents, and ultimately us to be as independent as possible, to keep driving. But at the same time, we need to keep us and other pedestrians safe. Well, AI-based safety systems in cars can do exactly that. And remember, just as with automatic transmission or anti-lock brakes, mechanical driving decisions will be automated, but the human is still in charge. The human still determines the destination, where the car will go. It's not like, a thousand cars are going to band together and try to take over the White House. <laughs> so is my point that AI is the best thing since sliced bread? No. The potential benefits are enormous, but I do acknowledge that there are some real risks. My point is this. AI is neither good nor evil. It's a tool. It's a technology for us to use. And to paraphrase Spider-Man, with great technology comes great responsibility. So I invite each and every one of you to join me in advocating for the responsible use of AI, in advocating for AI for the common good, in using AI to help us tackle problems that we as humans can't tackle alone. Thank you.